Um, yeah, so welcome to another episode of Still We Persist. Um, my name is Mia Arvisu. I'm um, on the team, the leadership team for Aya, and this is my co-host. I'm Shaina Khan. Um, and today we're extra excited. Um, we kind of have a live recording of Still We Persist, and we have special guest Rati D, um, who we'll be introducing in a bit. Um, but before we get started, I like to give a land acknowledgement, um, and I'll give one from OSU, and China will give one from Kentucky, where they're based out of. So, Oregon State University in Corvallis, Oregon, is located within the traditional homelands of the Mary's River or Ampunafu Band of Kalapuya. Following the Willamette Treaty of 1855, Kalapuya people were forcibly removed to reservations in Western Oregon. Today, living descendants of these people are part of the Confederated Tribes of Grand Ronde Community of Oregon and the Confederated Tribes of Siletz Indians. And where I am in my neighborhood in Louisville, Kentucky, uh, this used to be the traditional lands of the Osage, the Eastern Band of Cherokee, the Shawnee, the Adena, and the Hopewell people. Um, most of the people of these nations were forcibly removed to Oklahoma, but a lot of them remain in Kentucky. And I want to acknowledge that I'm using, I'm working on the land that traditionally belongs to their ancestors. Thanks, Shaina. Um, so now, just a little rundown of the event. Um, we have special guest Rati D with us, who I'll talk a little bit more about in, in just a minute. Um, so they will be performing, and after their performance, we'll have a chance to ask them any questions um, and maybe like just conversate with them for a little bit. So yeah. Without further ado, I'm going to introduce Rati D. Um, so Rati D is a singer and songwriter from Zimbabwe who aspires to spread a positive light through motivational music and uplifting melodies. She plays a traditional instrument called Mbira as a way to connect with her creator and ancestors to bring forth awareness of the power within the self and um, to connect with a celebration of life. Um, so without further ado, Rati D, is there any words you'd like to share? Maybe introduce yourself. Um, well, I mean, I'd like to emphasize that I'm from Zimbabwe and very proud to share that. Uh, and I'm happy to be here. <laughs> it's an honor. Um, thank you so much, Maya, for putting this together. I appreciate it. Yeah, and just, um, it's Mia, by the way. Uh, Mia. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Um, well, yeah, well, we're really excited to have you at ATD, and um, I'm excited to be able to listen to your music and see how other people connect with it and to hear the messages you have to share. Um, yeah, so if you want to get started, the stage is yours. Thank you. So I have with me a Zimbabwean traditional instrument. And some people call it um, bi, uh, bira, kalimba, thumb piano. And it's just played by plucking keys. And our people, Zimbabwean people, we use this instrument as a way of you know, communicating with those who have left us. Um, we use uh, the instrument in traditional ceremonies, maybe when celebrating a baby. Uh, for wedding, so it is a very sacred instrument and I am very proud to represent my country uh, with this instrument. Um, the first song that I'm going to share is called Mtsene, which means Holy One. And in this song, I'm acknowledging my creator for walking with me, you know, through this journey. Being in a foreign land is not easy, you know, but if you have that higher power or self that you connect to, whatever it is that you connect to, I feel like it becomes a journey that's a little bit more bearable. Um, so, um, so in, let me know if you can hear the instrument too, because, you know. <laughs> can 
hear that? Okay. I sang it in my native language, which is called Shauna. And like I said, I'm just acknowledging my creator and giving thanks for this guide, for the guidance, you know, all through my life. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I don't know if you've seen the chat, but we've gotten some, a, a lot of complimentary reactions to that song. So thank you so much for sharing that with us. Thank you. Um, 
The next song that I'm going to share is called Golite, and it's in another native language that I speak, which is called Ndebele. And um, if you've heard of the Zulu tribe, the Ndebele and the Zulu tribe are very much related. The Ndebele kind of broke away from the Zulu tribe. So I speak in Debele as well. Um, and in this song, I'm saying we are golden. <laughs> and golite means gold. And I'm just trying to emphasize how sometimes the challenges that we go through can break us down and we feel like we're not really worth anything. But I like to give this analogy of how people uh, mine for gold. And you know, after they've extracted the gold, it's not just sent to the jewelers in that state. It needs to be polished down and, you know, carved, you know, take out all the all the other stuff out there. So all the I'd like to say that all the challenges that we go through kind of shape us into the gold that we are. So I hope that when you listen to this song, you feel some golden energy just flowing through your body because that's you are golden, we are golden.
Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Like, I know you can't see it, but I'm over here dancing and swaying with you. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much. So I just wanted to explain the other reason why I wrote this song was because I just felt like, you know, as especially young girls, sometimes we, you know, like when you're younger, you give up, even when you're older too, you give up yourself, you know, to somebody and in particular in a relationship where, you know, you just adore somebody so much that you lose yourself in the process of loving that person. And, you know, you try so hard to please that person in every way you can, but then they always look down on you anyways if they don't really treasure you. So that's why I'm I wrote this song, especially for that young girl who just feels like, man, I'm trying everything I can, you know, but this person doesn't really even appreciate me. So that's the... That's the real, like, yeah, that's kind of why I wrote this song, you know, to acknowledge that, you know, sometimes there will be people who will take advantage of you and you have to remember that you're golden and you're made of gold. Um, if I can move on, <laughs> the next song that I'm going to share is called African. And I just celebrate my Africanness in this song and where I'm from. I am an African from a nation called Zimbabwe. Beautiful places, yeah. I am proud of who I am. I am an African from a nation called Zimbabwe. Beautiful places, yeah. I am proud of who I am. I, I, oh, oh, I'm proud of oh, oh, I'm proud of oh, oh, I'm proud of oh, oh, Thank you. 
all the wrong reasons. Oh, cause of corruption, I'm standing me to make that change. I tell you about where I come from. No, for the wrong reasons. Oh, cause of corruption, I'm standing me to make that change. I tell you about where I come from. Zimbabwe. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for coming back on the screen. Like that, oh, that feels really good when, when I'm done with the song <laughs> to see your smiles and stuff. Thank you. <laughs> I really enjoyed that. A lot of people yes. from the chat too. <laughs> okay, awesome. Um, I don't know, do you have questions or should I just, just keep going? <laughs> you can keep going and at the end, uh, we can we'll ask questions. All right. Um, the next song that I'm going to share is my personal favorite that I love to perform. And it's called The Woman of Africa. And in this song, I really was trying to talk to those women that are not very much celebrated. And most of the times it's the, you know, women, for me in particular, I grew up in a in a city where a lot of women were vendors, you know, they would sell this or sell that just to send their kids to school. So I felt like nobody was really celebrating those women. But then, you know, if you see a superstar on, on TV or a doctor or a lawyer, they're just adorned, like, wow, she's doing great, you know. But then these mothers are just putting together those scents to try and send their kids to school. So I want to just give those women some love and you know acknowledge them, you know, and their efforts that they're doing to try and give their kids a better future. So woman of Africa. the truth I know Grace don't fear that I'll never uphold Every woman has got a crown made of gold It's time to recite stories that have never been told about the women Women of Africa So strong and bold They are women Women of Africa Won't I the truth
been shown. The roads of freedom, nothing can bring you down. Now you know you have the power to take your flow from the struggle. Take the strength, cause you are a woman, woman of Africa. So strong and bold, you are a woman, woman of Africa. Now you know you have been shown. The roads of freedom, nothing can bring you down. Now you know you have the power to take yourself from the struggle. Take the strength, cause you are a woman, woman of Africa. So strong and bold, you are a woman, woman of Africa, woman of Africa. Be proud of who you are, woman of Africa. Release your character, yeah. woman of Africa. Be proud of who you are, woman of Africa. Or oh, release your character, yeah. Oh, yeah. yourself to that I'm going to share. I'm going to switch it up a little bit and bring my guitar. And this song is called Mr. President. And I wrote it specifically for our Zimbabwean president who felt like being, you know, in power for more than 30 years was fair, especially also treating people very unjustly. So, unfortunately, he passed before he could hear it, <laughs> but it still, you know, it still is relevant to the president that's there right now in Zimbabwe. So, Mr. President. change your ways how do you think the young will learn from you if you an old man can change your ways 
How do you think the young will learn from you? You better change your ways. Give us time to know something different. Break away. We might have a little respect for you. You better change your ways. Give us time to know something different. Break away. We might have a little respect for you. Hello. Mr. President, I see you, you're living in luxury. Oh, well, the people of Zimbabwe have no power, no water. Who oh, well, are the people of Zimbabwe? Have no right to real money. Yeah. Hello, Mr. President. Can't you see your time is over? Yeah, yeah. Oh, we are ready for. Another time, another era. Oh, we are ready for you to go. It's time to go. You better change your ways. Give us time to know something different. Break away. We might have a little. For you, you better change your ways. Give us time to know something different. Break away. We might have a little respect for you. Oh, 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 oh. can change your ways how do you think the young will learn from you thank you <laughs> um okay the next song um Oh, pop, all oh, people in power need to hear this. That's so real. <laughs> True. Um, the next song that I'd like to share is called Loner. And that would be my second of the last song. And yeah, uh, Loner. <laughs> I'm a loner And for the first in a long time I feel like I'm stronger All that I feel is so good I feel it all over I do all my things just how I should Don't cry any longer Cause I don't know it all will be fine I am a loner and for the first in a long time I feel like I'm stronger all that I feel is so good I feel it all over I do all my things just how I should don't cry any longer Cause down on a widow will be fine 
Loner. So um, I wrote that song when I found myself alone a lot, <laughs> you know, and, you know, sometimes you kind of feel like the people want to hang out with me. Nobody wants to hang out with me. No friends want to come through, you know, to spend time. But then I just then figured out that, you know, maybe those are the times when I need to sharpen myself and get make myself better you know, and really reconnect with who I really am, you know, outside who I am when I'm with so-and-so or with a friend, you know, and, you know, like I was saying in the chorus that giving up is not an alternative. It's so easy sometimes to feel discouraged, you know, when you're in that time of solitude because there's no one cheering you on like, hey, you can do it, Rati, you can do it. And then you, it's easy to feel like, ah, this is not going to work. But then kind of is that time where you need to really sharpen yourself and and do the whole self-love thing it really works I didn't understand it in the beginning I thought it was a selfish thing you know self-love but then now I understand it more that there's no way you can love and appreciate other people if you don't take care of yourself so loner um then 
I don't know why I said last song, but uh, the next <laughs> the next song is is called Kudara, and that song is also in my native language, Shona. And Kudara means a long time ago. Uh, and in this song, I just share how I've always wanted to perform, you know, in front of people from the time I was a little girl. And now here I am. Some people, I, I remember my mom would always yell, you know, when I'm in the bathroom singing out loud, like, ah, you're so loud. <laughs> keep, keep quiet. <laughs> you know, but here I am, you know, I, I pursued that, you know, so um, good data. Child, I've always loved music. It was part of me. It was my love, but I didn't know just how I was there each time I sing out loud. Someone was saying shut up. Now here I am, a reminiscing on the old ten days. Now here I am, a reminiscing on the old ten days. As a child, I've always loved music. It was part of me. It was my love, but I didn't know just how I once again each time I sing out loud. Someone would say to shut up. Now here I am, a reminiscing on the olden days. Now here I am, a reminiscing on the olden days. Singing go. Dada nichi kura, kudara kwang nichi kura, ku dada nichi miki, kudara kwang nichi miki, and I show it a kupaza e, ku show it a kupaza e, ku kupaza nensi rangu, dada rang, eat it up today. Da da da, did it up today. Da da da, did it up today. My heart's beating in rhythm with the music. A little bit of will up the hill, I'll see. Whoa, my heart's beating here with the music. Oh, will I sing? Will I sing? Yeah, my heart's beating here with the music. A little bit of will up the hill, I'll sing. Whoa, my heart's beating rhythm with the music oh will i sing will i sing ku dada di chikura ku dada kwangu di chikura ku dada di chindiki ku dada kwangu di chindiki oh dai suira 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 oh I show it up, show it up, show it up. Oh, 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 oh,
you, Mia. I hope I said it right this time. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm gonna bring my instrument back. And now this one is the last one. <laughs> I hope that is okay. Uh, yeah, just as a reminder, we're, we'll wrap things up at 4.15. So um, maybe we'll have about a good, maybe 10 minutes for questions. Okay, so, all right. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, so the next song is called Samba. And Samba means a letter. And this is a letter to the people of Zimbabwe. Um, and in this letter, I'm saying that the oppressed are always going to be the victors. You know, um, I feel like sometimes, you know, we, especially if you're, you're finding yourself on that side where you are oppressed, um, it's just, it's a tough place to be in. It's a very tough place to be in. There's it, there's no hope, <laughs> you know. Um, especially when the people that are supposed to be the leaders are the ones who are supposed to be doing their part to take care of people. It's it's really a hopeless situation. But then I'm just reminding the Zimbabwean people and everyone all over that we are the victors. In the, in the end, we will be the victors. If it's not us, it's our descendants. They will reap those, um, they will reap the crop that we had, we would have sown. So, um, Samba. <laughs>
Thank you so much for that, Didi. Um, that was beautiful. All the songs. I know a lot of people in the chat um, share feelings of getting chills. The songs were beautiful. And I definitely share those feelings as well. So thank you so much. We really appreciate you sharing your music with us. And that's very special energy. And I think it's very much needed right now. So thank you. Well, thank you for having me and just, you know, taking the time to listen to, you know, that's to a different kind of music. You know, it's always kind of like, okay, this is different, but I appreciate you guys staying on. <laughs> yeah. And so now I would like to open it up to anyone in the audience that might have a question. You can drop it in the chat or the question answer box. Um, yeah, so definitely feel free to ask anything you might have for that CD. And Shaina and I will also have some questions for you as well. Um, it's only a few more minutes left, so maybe we have time for two questions. <laughs> Mia, why don't you get us going? I, I know you have probably a lot of questions you want to ask. <laughs> definitely, I do. Um, I guess one of the main things that comes to mind is when I think about music as an art and just hearing you sing is, you know, who, like, I feel very uplifted by your music. And so I'm just wondering who inspired you and who uplifted you so you can get to a point where you felt comfortable sharing your music and are like vulnerable enough to, to face yourself, right? Because you're aware of yourself and what you're saying and sharing through your music and then, you know, being comfortable enough to share that out. I feel like that's very challenging. And so I'm just curious about your journey through that. Yes, thank you. Uh, well, it took a while for me to gain the confidence, you know, to stand before people. I still like, before this, like my stomach was just like in a knot. <laughs> so I still definitely feel, you know, the nerves, but there's a lady, a Zimbabwean lady by the name Chuoniso Maraire. And she played the instrument as well, the Zimbabwean Imbira. And I just loved listening to her and I wanted to be like her so much, you know, and, um, there was just something like, you know, the chill energy. Each time I would listen to her, I would feel those feelings. And she would always talk about things that, you know, that I was going through or the whole nation was going through, be it politics or just mental health stuff. So listening to her definitely helped bring that out. And I also listened to a lot of Jill Scott and Erica Badu. Uh, so I'd say, you know, just listening to those people also definitely helped, you know, build that confidence because I would create songs and I'm like, oh, this sounds like some Erica vibe. So I think I got it. <laughs> um, yeah. And then just, you know, is with experience, you know, being put in spaces where you kind of have to show what you've got, you know, like I, I, I was in an acapella group, um, Nobuntu in Zimbabwe, and there's no instruments backing you up. <laughs> you have to sing, your instrument is your voice. 
So that was a definitely, that was the first platform that I ever got to put myself out there vocally. And as you know, as I performed more and more, I, I, I really appreciated the feedback that I was getting from people. And I also felt really good. I would feel those chills too. Like even when I play, I still feel that, that chill, like, okay, this is me. This is where I'm supposed to be, you know? And so, yeah, experience help has helped. I'm working on it still. <laughs> Yeah, I can definitely resonate with that. Um, just something as simple as like these paintings in the background and trying to share them with people like that. Yeah, it's it's challenging, but it's really exciting to see like when other artists and to hear your songs break through that that challenge, break through that wall of not being able to share ourselves. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I know it's 4.15, so if anyone has to go, please feel free. But I think if it's okay with you, Ratsi D, I know we got started a little bit later. If yeah. you're down the stay with for a few more questions. Yes. Cool. Um, I was also wondering a bit about uh, your musical journey. How, like, how did you get to, a, like, were there, do you have like previous musical experience? Like what was that journey like? Uh, I just sang in church when I was little. I sang in church a lot. And, and then also in middle school and high school, well, we call it primary school, <laughs> like seven years of, of uh, elementary and middle school put together and then high school. So I was always in the school choir and, um, that's that's basically the training that I've had, really. Um, uh, I also had a vocal coach. Well, we had a vocal coach as a group, Nobuntu, um, and he really worked very hard to teach us, you know, about breathing and posture, and you know. Um, but other than that, honestly, I honestly feel like my music journey was so. Like it's, it, it has happened so fast and in a situation where I feel like I, I was literally pulled out and just placed on the stage without much, um, like, you know, some people have like years of art school and stuff like that, but then I, I didn't really get that. So it's, I, I'll say again, it's experience, you know, like, just performing with different bands. Um, after the acapella group, I joined a band called Bongo Love, and it was a Zimbabwean band, but then they were well-traveled, you know, around the world. So when they asked me to join them, this was 2014, I said yes, because I knew that, you know, they were, they were a touring band. So I was really excited that they wanted me to do backing vocals on their album. I didn't know they were going to tour at that time to the US, but um, when they finally recorded the album and asked me if I wanted to travel to US, I was, I was like, it, I was like, yes, but it was also a tough time for me because I was also still part of the acapella group. So I felt that, you know, like, oh, should I go? Should I stay? No, but I followed my heart and now I'm doing my own thing. and. This, yeah, it's been an interesting journey. <laughs> um, yeah, really glad like you're able to listen to your intuition and your heart and follow that um, because I feel like where it's taking you, like not only does it give you joy, but it gives like me or like the audience a lot of joy too. And I think there's so much like the community, um, just like the world community, the women of color community, just I feel like there's so much to be shared through your music. Um, so yeah, it's really, really special. Um, also, what were some of the challenges that you faced along the way? And was there anything specifically um, 
just like being an artist, being a woman of color artist, was there anything that came up? And then how did you deal with that? Right. Um, I can really recall a time when I was with the a cappella group, Nobuntu, when we traveled to Germany and you know, when we would walk into restaurants, we would get the, the like mean mugs really from, you know, the elderly, you know, because we would like, there's just, a, I, I barely saw any black people other than ourselves. <laughs> so whenever we would walk into a space, we were not treated very well. And at the, at, there's a one time when we all got sick because we had like a cold because we weren't used to the, snow or anything and so we went to the venue where we were supposed to perform to let them know that hey this is not going to work today because we're all coughing you know and all that but then the person who was in charge of that uh show just cast us out literally like we don't want you acting here like african princesses so that was my face, my first experience of like someone treating me badly just because of my skin. And that was really hard. I felt like I couldn't really trust anybody anymore. You know, like when I, when someone was interested in working with us, I was always like, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if this person is going to, you know, consider us, you know, if we're not in our best states, you know, so um other than that i did work with a manager that was not great <laughs> you know he wasn't paying or honoring the artists in time or whatever they deserved and that almost did make me give up you know i almost gave up because i felt like man if i'm going to put all my efforts into this and then someone is disrespecting me in this way what is the point you know so I'm thankful that I listened to my gut in that time and I pulled myself out of that situation to start all over again and with no financial, um, any source of income. You know, it was one of those things where, okay, when the money is there, it's good, but when it's not coming on time, it's really frustrating, you know? So I was like, I need to take care of my mental health in this situation by walking away and being okay with not making that much money, you know, but yeah. So that was, that was a really challenging uh, time for me. Um, and being an immigrant, you know, it's not easy, like trying to adjust or trying to fix your paperwork and all that stuff. Like that was, it was all in the same time too when the manager was mistreating me. So I felt like, is it because I'm like, I'm an immigrant, I don't have my stuff together, you know? So yeah, that was, that was the most challenging time. But since then, since I walked away, I've been blessed, you know, with good people around me. Yeah. Shaina, did you want to jump in? Sure, yeah, um, I, I definitely have a question. So I'm wondering if performing in different languages feels different for you. Um, well, how, I'm not sure I understand how you mean. Yeah, okay. Um, does performing in English feel different from performing in a language you grew up speaking or I mean I'm not I'm not assuming that you didn't learn English you know as a child but maybe like there might be a difference in performing in a language you spoke with your family versus something that like feels a little less close to home maybe right well the truth is I was brought up in a family my mom was a teacher a school teacher so and then I had family who would always travel like outside of Zimbabwe. So I would say English was kind of the primary language in our household. So um, when I share my music in English, I feel like, you know, it's, it's easier for the audience to understand what I'm saying. So I, you know, it, it, that feels good knowing that, okay, they know what I'm saying. But then when I'm sharing in Shona or in Debele, I feel like I'm being authentic, you know, in, in my 
in my uh, creations and and just in who I am. I'm being authentic to where I'm from as well. So I'm happy because I feel like the different sounds also kind of make the art, you know, the click sounds and stuff. So it's all part of the art. So um, I do feel a sense of pride <laughs> when I share in my own languages, but it's really the same because like I was saying, I, I was brought up in an environment where I was speaking all three languages in the same way, really. Thank you for sharing um, some of this, bringing it back to the previous question, um, the struggles that you had. I think it makes it so like the audience can appreciate the art so much more to know like what has had to, like the challenges that have been overcome to just share music and to, you know, share the songs. Um, yeah, it just makes, makes it that much more appreciatable and also um, can show like the community that they can do it too and that these challenges can be overcome and that I, f I just feel very inspired right now and I, I feel like um, you just pass that on as a gift to the AYA community as well. So really want to thank you for that. Um, I think we are going to wrap up now, but I would like to offer you if you want to share any last words for the AYA community. Uh, well, thank you so much for having me. And I think, Mia, you're super awesome, you know, and thank you for saying that, like the, the sweet things you're saying to me. And I have so much respect for you as well as an artist, you know. Um, I have a secret dream of being a painter too. So seeing you doing it and living it, that's inspirational <laughs> as well. So um, thank you, Sh Sh I'm, I'm, I don't want to mess up, <laughs> Shaina. Shaina, yeah, thank you for Shina. asking. <laughs> Shaina, you know, Shaina in Shona means to, uh, to, to shine bright. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah, shine bright. So thank you all so much for this opportunity and all that you're doing to, you know, put women of color on the platform and celebrate women of color. I really am thankful. <sighs> Chills. <laughs> um, yeah, but we'll just say again, thank you, Rati D, for joining us today and being a part of this webcast. Um, you really gave everyone a treat today and to help us connect with ourselves more and each other. Um, thank you, Shaina, uh, <laughs> for being a great co-host. I want to shout out Cindy and Ishmael, too, from DCE and uh, for helping put together this webcast and shout out to... Um, the Hattie Redman Women at Gender Center and the AYA team as a whole and to KBVR for putting this on um, on YouTube. And thank you for everyone who came to today's event. Um, really appreciate the positive feedback you shared with Ratiti and for the group. Um, thank you all. And until next time, we'll see we persist. <laughs>